Hello everyone, my name's Carter. I'm an SCBAS member, and today I'm gonna to take you on a quick virtual field trip of Ed Levin County Park's Spring Valley area. Let's head out from home base and you'll find some birds. <laughs> The Spring Valley area at Ed Levin County Park consists of the Spring Valley Pond and its surrounding areas, which have grassy fields and expansive lawns with ample tree cover, as well as the beautiful foothills of the Diablo Range. We park at the last parking lot off Spring Valley Road because that one is closest to most of the birds. Many of the paths around the Spring Valley area are wheelchair accessible, such as the one you can see right now. Let's take a look at one adaptation that all birds have. In fact, it's so important that they carry it around on their faces, that is, their beak. The Cooper's Hawk has a relatively short and stubby beak, but the beak has a hooked and razor sharp tip, which the Cooper's Hawk can use to tear up small prey animals. The turkey vulture also has a relatively stout beak with a sharp, hooked end, which it uses to tear apart the carcasses that it feeds on. While I was filming the Cooper's Hawk, this huge bald eagle flew in and circled a few times over the pond. The bald eagle has a massive and razor sharp beak, which it uses to tear up the large fish it catches. Now that's a beak. The acorn woodpecker has a pointed and chisel-shaped beak, which it uses to hollow out holes in dead trees, or in this case, a telephone pole. In those holes, it stores the acorns that it eats. This acorn storage is called a granary. Here, one of the acorn woodpeckers is using its chisel beak to widen out one of those holes so it can store a larger acorn. The acorn woodpecker successfully nested this year at the Spring Valley area. Did you know that up to 16 adult woodpeckers can care for a brood of only 3 to 4 babies? Here, one of those hardworking adults feeds one of the babies. The Nuttles woodpecker is a smaller counterpart to the acorn woodpecker, but also has a pointed and chisel-shaped beak. It uses that beak to hammer through bark and occasionally remove smaller twigs from trees. Once it's drilled through the bark, it sticks out its tongue, which is extremely long and has hairy spikes on the end, which spear any insects hiding underneath the bark. Did you know that woodpecker tongues wrap all the way around their skull? They start near the front of it, then go over the top or around the back, and then out their beak. That's a long tongue. The California scrub jay has sort of an average beak because it's a generalist that eats whatever it can find. They'll eat anything from small berries and insects all the way up to snakes. The lazuli bunting, on the other hand, has a more specialized beak. It's stout and very powerful, which it uses to crush small seeds, like it's doing right now. Pied-billed grebe has a short beak with a pointed tip that it uses to catch its prey underwater, such as this crayfish, and whoa, yeah, they swallow their prey whole. Yeah, it doesn't seem like prey that big will fit in them, but uh, they're hungry little guys. The great blue heron has a real weapon of a beak. It's almost like a giant spear on its face. Here he goes, walking down the path, carrying his giant spear on his face. Even though it looks like a spear, and the way they fish is kind of similar to human spear fishing, they really use it more like a giant deadly pair of tongs to pick fish out of the water. The great blue heron hunts by standing perfectly still in the shallows of the pond and waiting for its prey to come close enough to strike. When it sees something, in one motion, BAM! Strikes the water and grabs a fish. It holds it between its beak, repositions it head first, and down the throat it goes. However, a fish that size isn't going to sustain a big heron for very long. Oh, there's another fish. 
once again, it's grabbed by the beak, turned around, and then down the throat it goes. Herons need a little bit of variety in their diet too, which this one gets in the form of a crayfish, which it crushes with its beak before swallowing it. However, not every strike is successful. Sometimes, when the heron's beak hits the water, prey jumps away, just out of reach. But that's the way of nature, so the great blue heron just does a little head scratch, then gets right back to hunting. The great blue heron isn't the only bird hunting on the shores of the lake. The snowy egret, with its bright yellow feet, wades through the shallows, using its long legs to keep its body dry. Snowy egrets have a very unusual style of hunting. They're more active than the great blue heron, actively pursuing their prey. When they see something, they do a foot wiggle, then bam, snatch it up in a second. Let's take a closer look. Here you can see the snowy's bright yellow feet wiggling just under the surface of the water. With that bright yellow color and all the motion of the egret wiggling them around, any fish that see them are going to get frightened and swim away. However, the snowy is ready and waiting for this, and when they see a fish swim away, they snatch it right up in their beak. Boom, just like that. And as you can see, the fish that the snowy goes after are generally pretty small, a lot smaller than the prey that the great blue heron likes to go after. The snowy just keeps on patrolling the shallows of the lake, snatching up small fish whenever it can. Though each bite it gets is very small, a lot of little fish together make a pretty good meal for the egret. However, when the opportunity presents itself, it'll go to deeper water and boom, catch a huge fish. That's at least a five inch sunfish, a massive catch for a snowy egret. It tries to swallow it, but struggles as the catch is so large. It then takes it onto land, throws its head back, and in one big gulp, the fish is gone. The egret takes a drink and seems to admire its catch for a little bit, but as is the way of the wild, it's right back to hunting. After all the excitement of watching birds hunt and catch prey with their beaks, this great egret decides to use his beak for a more docile purpose, cleaning and straightening his feathers. However, uh, he can be a little bit camera shy though. But then, he finishes up primping right in front of us, with the feather floating away to signal the end of a wonderful day. Thanks for coming on this virtual field trip with me. In case you're thinking about attempting this trip yourself, we rarely walked more than half a mile on each of the filming days, and most of the areas we were at were wheelchair accessible. In case you're looking for more information about Ed Levin County Park's Spring Valley area, my eBird checklists for days one and two of filming are linked down in the description. What was your favorite bird from today's adventure? Maybe a bird you want to see me make a special video on? Let me know down in the comments. Oh, and one more thing, I would recommend going to the Spring Valley area in the morning. All the birds that we filmed in the video we saw in the mid-morning, but one day when we went in the afternoon there were hardly any birds around. Thanks again for coming on this virtual field trip with me. I sure had a ton of fun along the way. I'll see you again soon with another virtual field trip, but until then, happy birding!